Hello, and welcome to the Medical City McKinney Joint Replacement Education Program. Medical City McKinney has received the Joint Commission Gold Seal of Approval for Healthcare Quality for its total hip and total knee replacement programs. This requires extensive on-site evaluations by Joint Commission reviewers every two years. We're independently reviewed and certified for excellence in care, outcomes, and patient family satisfaction. There's also specific nurse competencies. We provide a multidisciplinary team approach to your care. This includes you and your family or support person, your surgeon, a nurse practitioner on the orthopedic floor, the anesthesiologists, internal medicine doctor, nurses in the pre-op area, OR area, PACU, and floor nurses, your physical therapists and occupational therapists, nurse assistants, the pharmacist, dietitian, case manager and social worker, and the home health and rehab liaisons. What we'll cover in this class is preparing for your surgery, your surgery and hospital stay, after your hospital stay, and then we ask that you please review the frequently asked questions in your joint reconstruction booklet. Two to four weeks before your surgery, you should be doing this class, so congratulations, you're already started. You should be trying to do some of the exercises in your joint reconstruction booklet. We ask that you not put yourself in pain, but just try to get used to some of the exercises so that they'll be easier for you after your surgery. You should be getting medical clearances at this time. You, they must be completed by your primary care physician, as well as any specialized physicians that your surgeon might have asked you to go get clearance from. At this point, you're also going to be looking at your medications and discussing all of these with your PCP. Most importantly, you should be discussing any anticoagulants, pain medications, vitamins, or herbals that you'll be taking. Your preoperative appointment is a very important part of your successful surgery. One week before your scheduled surgery, you'll receive a call from Medical City McKinney registration for a pre-op appointment date and time. A pre-admission testing nurse will perform a history and a physical. You'll also get any EKGs, chest x-rays, blood work, or CT scans if you're having a MAKO robot surgery, as indicated. They'll do an MRSA screening. You'll sign consents for your surgery. And the nurse will also reconcile all the medications that you take. Let's talk about preparing your home. You will be using a walker for a short while after your replacement. Safety is a priority, so you will want to keep that walker until the physical therapist tells you you don't need it anymore. You're going to want to prepare your main room. Make sure you can get your walker through the area you're going to be, into your restroom, things like that. Let us know if you have stairs. Especially talk to your physical therapist about that so they can practice with you while you're here at the hospital. You want to have some night lights for those late night trips to the restroom. Remove all throw rugs and electrical cords. Any of those things are tripping hazards when you're walking with a walker. Move any obstacles that you can't get past with your walker. Keep frequently used items at waist level. You may want to stock up on some canned goods and prepared meals that can be frozen and easily reheated. You want a non-skid rubber mat in the bathtub and shower. You want to install grab bars if possible. Arrange for pet or child care if you're able to. You also want to assure that you have adequate support at home. You're going to need some help for the first one to two weeks, so make sure you've got someone there to support you. Skin care. This is to be completed the night before and the morning of surgery. At your preoperative appointment, you will receive an antiseptic solution that you'll be using for this procedure. You're going to be taking two showers that are at least six hours apart. You want to wash and rinse your hair as normal first. You're going to wet your skin, turn off the shower, and apply the antiseptic solution with a clean, wet washcloth from neck down and allow it to sit on your body for three to five minutes. At that point, you'll rinse off and dry with a clean towel. You're going to wear freshly cleaned clothing and put clean linens on your bed and then no pets allowed in the bed. Remember, this will be done 
twice, six hours apart. Here's what you've been waiting for, the day of surgery. You will arrive at pre-op approximately two and a half hours before surgery time. We use an enhanced surgical recovery program here, so it's okay for you to have clear liquids only after midnight before your surgery. You will also be given a carbohydrate load drink at your preoperative appointment that you will drink two hours prior to your surgery start time. And then you will take your preoperative med medications. The morning of your surgery, you're going to meet the anesthesia team. And there's multiple different types of anesthesias that are possible. The anesthesia team will help determine what is right for you. There's general anesthesia. There's a spinal block, there's a femoral block, and then you will also receive medication through an IV that is sedation, so the surgery is not felt or remembered. The actual surgery time will be anywhere from 45 to 90 minutes. After surgery, you'll be taken to the recovery room, or what you may hear us call PACU. This is where you'll go to recover after your surgery, and you'll be there for about an hour. At this time, your family will be notified and directed to your room on the orthopedic surgical floor. The surgeon should meet with your family at this time as well. The internal medicine doctor will be consulted on all orthopedic cases to help monitor any other medical conditions you might have while you're here. When you arrive to your room, this is going to be a very busy time. They're going to be frequently taking your vital signs they will be working on your pain management and how that is done, we'll look at on the next few slides. Your physical therapy starts today. We want you out of bed day of surgery. Now, depending on what time your surgery is, you may not have your physical therapy evaluation day of surgery, but the nursing staff will help you stand at bedside, maybe take a few side steps and take your Foley catheter out. You'll be getting IV fluids, your post-op antibiotics, and you'll start with some good oral intake. Again, talking about that Foley catheter, we want that removed with your first stand at bedside because getting up to the bathroom is physical therapy. You'll finally be able to eat. Okay, pain management. This is different for everyone. Pain will be assessed frequently by your nurse using a scale from zero to 10, zero being no pain at all, 10 being the worst pain. Um, you'll also see um, a little sign like the one at the bottom of this slide um, on your board in your room, kind of giving you a little guide as to um, how to grade that for yourself. There are IV pain medications, which are fast acting. Um, uh, they don't last quite as long. And then there's your oral pain medications that um, take a little longer to take effect, but they are longer acting, last for a longer period of time for you. You have to expect a post-op pain level of three to four. Um, a functional pain goal should not be zero. You know you're gonna have some post-operative pain, um, it should be manageable, um, but you will have a little bit of pain, but we want it um, to be at a point where you can um, function and get up with your physical therapist um, and be doing your walking and your exercises that you need to do. Communication with your nurse, nurse practitioner and surgeon is key to achieving effective pain control. It's important to take your pain medication prior to your physical therapy. Do not let your pain get out of control before asking for pain medication. We wanna talk a few about a few possible side effects from pain medication, including constipation, nausea and or vomiting, respiratory distress or sleepiness and itching. There's some medications that the nurses can give you to help with some of these things but we want you to be aware of some of your side effects. Now, if you're having a total knee replacement, there's a few things that we want you to keep in mind. You can expect to have some pain behind your knee. You can expect to have swelling down the extremity, usually for about two to three months. 
And we want to reiterate the importance of extension or the straightening of your knee. You will see that we will use towel rolls under your ankle to keep your knee straight. And we will be talking about those quadricep sets to fire your quadricep muscle to work on the straightening of your knee. You can regain a lot of lost range of motion in the first two weeks after your surgery if you'll keep up with your exercises that your physical therapist has taught you. Even if you had limited range of motion prior to surgery, you can regain that motion. Do not put a pillow under your knee. That is your number one precaution for a knee replacement. Putting the pillow underneath the knee will keep it bent and will make getting that straightening back very difficult. If you're having a total hip replacement, here's a few things we'd like for you to remember. There's two different approaches that the surgeon may take when doing your hip replacement. The first is the anterior approach, which is the most common one done here at Medical City McKinney. This is where the surgeon goes in through the front side of the joint, and there's one precaution for this surgery, which is not to take your leg back behind you. We call that extension, no excessive extension of the hip. So if you're gonna be stepping backwards, you wanna step backwards with your non-surgical leg first. The other approach is the posterior approach. This posterior approach has three precautions. You do not wanna bend your hip past 90 degrees, which means if you're sitting in a chair, you don't wanna bend over. You do not wanna cross your legs and you do not wanna turn your leg inward. The physical therapist will help you remember these hip precautions and the occupational therapist as well will help you learn how to do activities without breaking your hip precautions. The third thing is that ambulation is very important no matter which approach your doctor took in doing your surgery. Hip replacements will be stiff during the early recovery phase, so it's important to be getting up and walking. Here's some equipment to expect after your surgery. You will need to obtain a walker before your surgery. You don't need to bring it into the hospital with you. We have walkers here that we can use with you, but you wanna have it ready for you at home. This walker should have two wheels in front and two sticks in back. There's an optional piece of equipment, which is a ice machine or polar ice machine. If you choose to get this piece of equipment, when you bring it with you, bring it in the packaging. We want everything completely packaged as they will put this on you while you're in surgery, so they do not want anything open. You'll have an IV pump. You'll have an aerobica, which is for pulmonary hygiene to keep you from getting pneumonia. And you'll also have sequential compression devices or SCDs, which are pumps that are either applied to your foot or calf, and they are to prevent you from getting any blood clots. On post-operative day one, you'll be getting lab work. Uh, they are watching for um, anemia, anemia, kidney function, and um, they're watching your electrolytes. You will have physical therapy. If you did not have physical therapy the evening of surgery, you should have stood with your nurse and had your Foley catheter removed. But physical therapy, if you did not have it the evening of surgery, will start this day with an evaluation in the morning and you'll be seen twice daily. We want you to get out of bed for all meals. We want you sitting up in that chair. Um, we don't want you laying flat in the bed. And you're gonna be doing exercises uh, to regain your motion and your muscle control. We ask that you call, don't fall. Our goal is to keep you safe from harm. Uh, you will find that there's alarms on the bed and um, an alarm in the chair, if you're sitting up in the chair. We want you to just please remember, it is so important for you to call for assistance. There's um, lines and cords related to your IVs and your ice machines and your SCDs. So let us help you maneuver around all of those things. If your Foley catheter was not removed day of surgery, which it should have been, um, it will re be removed that morning. Your vital signs will be more on a routine basis now and uh, you will meet with a case manager or social worker to make arrangements for your home health care um, with physical therapy and occupational therapy. Let's work on preventing complications. 
DVTs are blood clots that form in one or more of the deep veins in your body, usually in the legs. Ways that we're helping prevent that are those SCDs, which are those pumps on your legs, anticoagulant medications, exercises that physical therapy is teaching you, especially those ankle pumps, and then early ambulation. That's why we want you up day of surgery. Pneumonia is lung inflammation caused by infection. You will be receiving the aerobica to work on your lung function, as well as that early ambulation helps open up those lungs and get you moving. The other thing we want you to pay attention to is surgical site infection. Reporting signs and symptoms of any infection early on is very important. Number way, one way you can prevent surgical site and infection is hand hygiene. You will have gotten prophylactic antibiotics and um, we want to make sure you're aware of signs and symptoms of infection. Those include fever of greater than 100.5, any excessive redness and warmth at the surgical site, abnormal drainage at the incision site, abnormal edema or swelling. Uh, we expect you to have some swelling, but if it's very excessive, then consult the doctor. And if you have any flu-like symptoms, that is another thing that you want to let your doctor know about. These things can occur on post-op day one, or if you're unable to discharge on post-op day one, post-op day two. Your care will consist of some of the same activities that you experienced on post-op day one. Your strength will continue to increase with therapy and your pain will become more manageable on oral medications only. You will only be on oral medications at home, so it's important for you to get off of those IV meds as soon as possible and um, start managing your pain with the oral pain medications. Physical therapy and occupational therapy will continue to teach you your exercises, your precautions, and reinforce your safety at home. There will be dressing changes. They'll remove the big bulky dressing off of your knee if you've had a knee replacement, and then you will discharge home. We want to make sure that the entire time you're here, you're always calling for assistance when you want to get out of bed. So remember, call, don't fall. Discharge. This usually occurs on post-op days one or two. Your discharge planning starts on the day of your surgery. There's things we want to make sure are occurring before you discharge home. One of them is to complete your physical therapy and occupational therapy regimen, including safety, the ability to get in and out of bed, onto and off of the toilet, and ambulation. We wanna make sure you're tolerating a diet. We wanna make sure you're urinating without difficulty. We wanna make sure your pain is controlled on the oral pain medications. And we also wanna make sure you're passing gas or have had a bowel movement. Our goal at Medical City McKinney is for everyone to have a safe discharge home. Discharge medications. You're going to be receiving several medications when you discharge from the hospital, including a pain medication, NSAIDs, which is an anti-inflammatory, blood thinners, which is medication to prevent post-operative blood clots. If needed, you'll be getting iron, and you'll also be getting a stool softener to combat the constipation from pain medications. Please make sure you understand your medications before you leave the hospital. And if you have questions, please ask your nurse. All right, so please, please, please read through your total joint booklet from the pre-admission testing visit, or you may have received that at your doctor's office. Especially look through those frequently asked questions. Practice your exercises prior to your surgery. Um, you don't have to force things or cause pain. We know you're already in pain prior to your surgery, but working on a few of those will help your recovery um, and help you with your exercises after surgery. Also ensure all of your medical clearances have been completed. Thank you so much for choosing Medical City McKinney to have your joint replacement surgery. We encourage you to write down any questions or concerns that you have in the notes section in the back of your total joint replacement booklet that you can ask the nurse or doctor or anesthesiologist when you get to the hospital. Please get some good rest leading up to your scheduled surgery. 
and we look forward to seeing you. I hope this class has been informational and helps alleviate some of your anxiety or stress about your surgery. Please feel free to call Allison Butler, the nurse practitioner for the orthopedics team, if you have any questions or concerns. Her number is 214-587-1569. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation today. We look forward to having you at Medical City McKinney and good luck with your new joint.